Welcome to ACI, the Network Made Simple learning series. In this video, we will cover Module 1, Initial Tasks, Chapter 5, Basic Services and Out-of-Band Management. In the previous episodes, we learned how to initially configure the physical APICs and perform auto-discovery, firmware upgrades, and automatic VXLAN configuration for spines and leaves. To finish the Initial Tasks module, and just like with any traditional network, we need to provision access to our ACI fabric for management purposes and configure some basic services globally. Let's begin with management. ACI provides us with three different options to access the APICs as well as each spine and leaf in the fabric for operations, configuration, and troubleshooting purposes. Let's start with the first one. The APIC can be used as a terminal server to jump from it to any given spine or leaf by using the ACI infrastructure network. This is how it works. In episode 2, we performed the initial APIC installation. Therefore, you should have access to it through the GUI, CLI, or even through the RESTful API. You're basically accessing any of them through your out-of-band management network, which connects to the APIC management ports. Then, as covered before, the APIC is connected to the leaf layer using the fabric ports. With this in mind, let's SSH into the APIC CLI to show you how to access each element in the fabric through the infrastructure network you configured in episode 2. Let's first issue the command show version, where we can see we have a set of two leaves and one spine. We can use the APIC as a jump point to access any element within the fabric. Let's test it by issuing the command SSH plus a node name, in this case leaf1. As you can see, once in there, we can issue any show command locally. However, no configuration will be done here, since everything is always configured at the APIC level. If you're running all the ACI versions, the attach command may also be an option, as you can see. We are using the internal infrastructure network to communicate between APIC and the elements in the fabric. We can verify this by issuing the command ACI diag AV read, where you can see the values configured in episode 2 such as the TEP address pool, which in our case is 10.1.0.0.16. Then, by issuing the command ACI diag FMV read, we can see the actual IP addresses each spine or leaf got assigned from that TEP pool. Therefore, the SSH or attach plus node name command is equivalent to perform an SSH from the APIC to the corresponding device IP address. Now, as a second option, we could connect each spine and or leaf to the out-of-band management network directly through each device's management port, which is commonly located at the rear side of each switch and identified by this icon. This would allow us to directly access any device in the ACI fabric without APIC dependency. We will now use the GUI to take a look at how this configuration would look like. However, keep in mind you could also do this and any other configuration in the CLI as well as by a RESTful API if you prefer. First, we will click on Tenants and go to the Management Tenant tab. The Management Tenant is one of the three default tenants in ACI and it is an isolated network partition in our ACI fabric. We will cover tenants in detail in Module 3. Then, click on Quick Start and Out of Band Management Access. Now, click on the Configure Out of Band button, which will take you to the Out of Band Management Configuration Wizard. Our first step is to define which nodes will have dedicated access to the OOB network. In my case, I will select every node except for the APIX, since I already provisioned OOB access for them in episode 2 and I don't want to overwrite those IP addresses. It may sound obvious, but I already have cabled each of the selected nodes on their management port to the OOB network. I will now click Next and will provide the starting IP address and default gateway I want to use for these nodes. Make sure you have enough available IP addresses for these nodes on your OOB network. As the next step, I will allow access to anyone through the OOB network, so I will add 0000 /0 in the Allowed External Hosts field, and then will let any type of traffic in and out of this node's OOB. You can obviously harden your configuration based on your security settings. Finally, let's click on Finish. We can now see that all nodes in the fabric got an OOB IP address. Let's verify it is working by trying to SSH to one of the node's IPs. We can now successfully access this node directly through the OOB network. 
But you can issue some commands locally on the management interface, which corresponds to Ethernet 0, if you want to verify the IP assigned to it. There is a third method that we can use in ACI to provide a management network called InBand. This is basically creating another network inside ACI within the management tenant exclusively for management purposes. If you would like to access this network from the outside, you will need to advertise it externally through an L3 out. We will cover L3 outs in Module 3, as well as email management configuration when we cover network insight resources in another module. We also need to make sure time is synchronized across our fabric, therefore NTP should be configured in ACI. We will do this in three steps. First, we will create a pod date and time policy using the wizard. Then, we will use that policy in a pod policy group. And finally, we will create a pod profile that will use that policy group, which includes our NTP policy. Let's begin. First, let's verify that NTP is not running on our APICs or switches by issuing the command show NTP queue at the APIC level or show NTP peer status at the switch level. Then go to the GUI and click on fabric and fabric policies. On the quick start menu, click on create an NTP policy, add a name to it, then specify the IP address of your NTP server, click on preferred, and select the default management out of band network EPG, which will specify the OOV network from tenant management will be used for NTP purposes. Once the policy got created, click on create a policy group, add a name to it, and use the date and time policy you just created. Finally, Apply that policy group by creating a pod profile, which will include all the pods in our ACI setup. And we're done. We can verify it is working by loading to the switches and or the APIC and issuing the same commands we once did before. You may also want to create additional users for your ACI fabric. This is a very quick three-step process. First, go to the admin tab and on the quick start menu, click on create new local users and specify the username and password for it. Second, you can optionally assign this user to a specific tenant within your ACI fabric or provide that user with visibility across all tenants, like in our case. And third, specify which role you want that user to play. In our case, we will grant admin read write privileges. That's it. There are other basic services you may want to configure initially, which won't be covered in this module but that are simple enough to follow through cisco.com documentation. Congratulations, this is the end of module one. Feel free to recap everything you learned by using our HTML5 walkthrough labs or see the full detailed ACI initial setup guide on cisco.com. Thanks for watching.